Um, I guess it would be related to the ant my answer to the previous question. Um, at least in the context of ocean acidification, you mitigate local impacts that drive coastal acidification. So again, that could be nitrogen, phosphorus, uh, that sort of thing. You there are other cases where they've shown that you can uh, buffer acidified muds that uh, now that no longer sustain clams, but if you treat them with ground up shells, then you can make them suitable for uh, growing clams once again. So we'll take those steps. In the meanwhile, and eventually, I firmly believe that we will lower CO2 emissions. One of the major policy developments in the U.S. was uh, President Obama's executive order to uh, have the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, uh, require a 30 percent reduction in CO2 emissions uh, below 2005 levels. That's from the U.S. that has been moving pretty slowly in terms of addressing CO2 emissions. That's just massive. That is just incredible. That's really, to me, is, is as important as anything that's happened in the U.S. In climate change strategy ever. For the, for, it's unfortunate that he had to do it as an executive decree because he never would have gotten it through our dysfunctional Congress. Um, but still, it, it, it was a huge step. It was withheld by the Supreme Court a week ago, so that's, that's fantastic development, even though it's CO2 and not explicitly oceans. Uh, the other was, um, another was the Oceans Conference, so I mentioned in the beginning, um, that uh, Secretary Kerry would... Um, he would convene that meeting, which was, that was, doesn't get any higher level. Even my, I asked my ex-boss at the State Department, I said, hey, can you get me in? I said, yeah, sure, I can get in. He said, even I'm not going to this meeting, because they were all full of ministers, and this is just very, very high-level stuff. Uh, that, number one, that they would convene that meeting, and the State Department does not uh, propose something like that on a policy level unless they're willing to back it up. So it's just the way they, one luxury to working with the State Department is they're so, they just mean what they say. And when they commit to something, then they follow through. It's that simple. So if they commit, they say, these are our three pillars. It's not just because it looks nice on a website. It means that if a state or some whatever entity says, this is my proposal, this is how I'm going to do it, this is how it fits under this agenda, how can you help me? Then they'll try to help you. Obviously, it's, it's, and it's not necessarily straightforward, but they don't make those commitments casually. And it's definitely not just, it's not just because it sounds cool. They, there's no question but that Secretary Kerry wants to see substantive things come out of this. I absolutely firmly believe it. In one way or another, depending on the, you know, the creativity of the people presenting the proposals, you know, they, they will help wherever they can. So I'll just give you an example from my visit here that I simply was not expecting at all. One of the plat one of the reasons we put on the workshop in New Zealand, I think I mentioned, was that New Zealand is a fantastic platform for capacity building in the broader uh, Asia Pacific region, in particular Pacific Island countries that are just going to get hammered by ocean acidification. We don't get the corals. Or this entails capacity building investment, and you might have to send students to get PhDs. Real capacity building where they're actually, it's not just a project that begins and ends in five years, they can run this stuff for the indefinite future. And that's going to mean investments in equipment, investments in training, everything. This is what I did for, for 12 years in Latin America, uh, where we built laboratories, bought equipment, had students get PhDs, and now it's up and running. They don't, they simply left because they don't need me. It's okay with me. Work myself out of a job. That's, that's, I'm totally cool with that. Uh, so that's what we think of as capacity building.